is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health plan. Hey, beautiful soul. It's Jacqueline from the Las Labia Chronicles in partnership with Lichen Sclerosis Support Network. If you are looking to empower yourself with information, find acceptance, and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to our channel and keep on watching. And if you have a friend, family member, or loved one with lichen sclerosis, and you want to learn more about the physical and mental health aspects of living with lichen sclerosis so that you can better support them in their journey, then please keep on watching and please share this video with them as well. All right, so in today's video, we are going to be chatting emollients, balms, salves, barrier creams. What the heck are they? What's the difference? When should I be using what? How should I be using? What's a patch test? We're going to get into all of this because I'm a huge proponent of emollients and barrier creams. I think they should be included in most people's care plans with respect to managing lichen sclerosis. So we're going to talk a little bit about why and then kind of help differentiate and make sense of all of these different types of products that you can be using. As always, if you find the information in these videos helpful, then please give us a like, please subscribe to our channel. And of course, leave us a comment, share what is your favorite balm, salve, emollient. Tell us in the comments below. With that, let's jump into the video. So I want to start us off with a really quick why. Why are emollients and barrier creams so important for folks with lichen sclerosis? Well, I think for me, one of the big factors is that steroids, which are what most folks are prescribed and used to treat lichen sclerosis, steroids do have a slight drying effect. Now, when your skin, which may already be itchy, irritated, raw, sore, in pain, when that skin is dry, it's gonna amplify those symptoms even more. And it's gonna be more prone to irritations. If you're walking and there's friction, it's gonna be even more irritating to that already irritated skin. So what do we wanna do? We wanna bring back moisture and we wanna protect that area. So both barrier creams and emollients, and we will talk about the difference more fine grain differences in a bit, both of those will provide moisture and protection to those areas so that we're not worrying about the dried out skin and that, you know, chafing that can come with friction, which can irritate our skin more. Furthermore, and I do really go through a huge breakdown of this in a previous video that I did on my YouTube channel. Stay with me here. Okay. Emollients or barrier creams in conjunction with your steroids can help prevent things from fusing and sticking together. This is a really important point because a lot of us feel a lot of distress over the fusing aspect of our condition. At least that's the case for me. Like I found the fusing, the changes to my vulvar anatomy, architectural changes, that really threw me through a head spin. And I know that for me, I wanna preserve what I the, the, the bare minimum of what I do currently have. I want to preserve it. I want to keep that going uh, steady for the rest of my life. So if you want to learn more about how emollients can help prevent fusing in conjunction with your steroids, I will leave a card up here for you to check out later. And I'll also leave that linked in the description box below if you want to check out that video. But those are some of the two big points that I usually emphasize in why emollients barrier creams can or should you know be included in your care management with lichen sclerosis okay let's start us off with emollients what are emollients emollients are essentially a more think of it as like a moisturizer or a serum but instead of your face it's for your vulvar skin so emollients tend to be quite thin in consist consistency they're typically oils or kind of cream based products that again are more thinner and easier to apply overall so when i you know typically give examples i'll say think about things like coconut oil olive oil emu oil jojoba oil etc right really thin consistency so this is my tub rightly so it is 2.3 kg so essentially this is the size of my face 
And this is my coconut oil. This is my go-to emollient that I'm gonna use often. What I love about coconut oil, honestly, is how cheap and how accessible it is. Um, you can get it at virtually any grocery store, sometimes pharmacy is really easy to get um, and probably one of your cheapest options. So just to kind of demonstrate, I'm gonna take a little bit and just kind of put it on my arm so we can kind of see now as you can tell i'm wearing a dress it is summer so it's hot so when i get it it's kind of hard like this but very quickly it kind of dissolves into this oil so now as you can see it's really real well hopefully you can see <laughs> how oily this is and it kind of drips a little bit down i can kind of feel a little bit of it dripping as i'm speaking um so this is what i mean by it's a very thin consistency right it's thin it tends to run a little bit more the staying power isn't as sharp as some of the other products that we're going to talk about i'm now holding my arm out really awkwardly on the side because i did not think ahead and i do not have a towel um, so here we go um, i can see the dripping in action which is cool but yeah so these emollients are great for hydrating for soothing for protecting the skin as well as helping to reduce friction which can just increase irritation and if you're already symptomatic it can kind of make those symptoms worse which is definitely not what we are looking for so those are kind of the main ways that emollients can kind of help and again of course in conjunction with your steroid it can prevent fusing but go check out that video to learn how so one more point on the emollients and the thin runny nature of them now i did clean my arm up um, so one thing that folks sometimes struggle with is worrying about the oils getting on their clothing or running down their legs and stuff. And I will say that when we're talking about single ingredient plant-based oils or, or non-plant-based oils, so same goes for emu oil. So, you know, emu oil, coconut oil, olive oil, any of those single ingredients, they, they are more prone to kind of running. They're very quite slippery. Now this makes them a beautiful, in my opinion, a beautiful texture to kind of walk with or even to work out in. I really, really enjoy that kind of texture when I'm walking. Now that said, I can sometimes notice that or appreciate how that runniness can kind of get onto the thighs. I typically don't have that problem if I'm being honest, but I also don't like scoop out like a, a massive ton of it. I apply smaller amounts more frequently so that I don't really have that runny issue. Also, typically um, when I'm wearing underwear, they're usually white cotton underwear that I buy in bulk. So I'm not really concerned about if the oil gets on them and kind of, um, you know, stains it slightly. Um, first of all, I've never noticed stains on my white cotton underwear, but even if it did, I kind of don't care because I buy those in bulk. It's like $20 for like seven pairs of, you know, extra large cotton white underwear. So I'm kind of okay if it gets on that. I'd rather it get on that than some of my clothing. Um, when I work out, I also use coconut oil, but I typically work out in black leggings or darker leggings. So it typically won't show even if there is a little bit of leakage. Although I had one mishap, which I'm just gonna tell you for fun. So I decided to go to the gym and I wore these like light blue, kind of like the color of my eyes, like, but like really, really like a pale blue leggings. I don't know why I made that selection. Um, and uh, full disclosure, when I say I wear leggings, I don't wear a thong or underwear. When I go to the gym, I just wear leggings and I go commando. So I did this and I took an extra amount of coconut oil. I don't know why. I think it's just what I happened to take out of the, the container that day. Um, and yes, by the way, I did wash my hands prior to taking it out. Just for any folks that are like, hey, did you wash your hands? Yes, always wash your hands. Um, and so I, I put quite a liberal amount on and I was doing my workout and I don't remember what machine I was on, <laughs> but the mirror is right in front of me, right? And I look and I've got my, my legs kind of open like this. So you can see like the full, full pelvic region. And I'm like, oh, looks like I peed myself. Um, <laughs> so the coconut oil had got all over those 
leggings and it looked like I peed myself and I was like well okay but I was like halfway through my workout and I was like you know what like whatever I'm just gonna play this off as it's sweat and nobody cares I wipe down my equipment when I'm done whatever so I just kind of ran with it but typically I don't have that problem and I can usually offset it by just applying slightly less more frequently um and when I'm wearing like um, cotton underwear I don't really have that issue but I did just want to flag that because some people don't like the fact that it kind of can get on their underwear or it can kind of get on their legs a little bit some people find it really runny um, particularly when it's really hot out like it's, clearly I'm wearing a dress it's summertime here so it's really hot um, definitely it's gonna run more so I just want to kind of flag that because I know some folks uh, don't like that but don't worry because there are other options for you if that is the case in terms of thickness, barrier creams are your heavy lifters. When we talk about the spectrum of these kind of vulvar moisturizers, emollients tend to be the thinnest, and then barrier creams are gonna be the thickest. So I'm gonna show you a couple in, the, in, a, in a minute or two so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, but they're really those heavy lifters. Now, barrier creams, because they're thicker, they really create this protective layer between your vulvar skin and the external environment where the external environment can be irritants like urine or chemicals in a pool in a public pool anything like that that could potentially cause stinging irritation pain discomfort etc so um, they like emollients do also they moisturize they hydrate they lock moisture in so they're really good at that they can be really soothing for many people certain um, barrier creams also have additional ingredients to help with itch for example we'll talk about one momentarily but those are kind of the big heavy lifters right they're doing a lot of that work plus giving you that barrier so i'm going to talk about my routine in a bit but when might a barrier be you know appropriate is when you're going swimming so if you want to protect you know the skin against any kind of treatments that they're using in the pool if you have any open cuts fissures tears ulcers anything like that and you're urinating when urine gets in an open wound it can really sting and burn and irritate so what you can do is you can apply that barrier cream over that fissure so you're putting a protective layer over that fissure to help it heal and urine isn't directly getting into that because you've got that protective kind of seal over it so that's kind of the purpose of barrier creams is really to do that big heavy lifting with respect to creating that protective barrier so i've got a couple here now unfortunately i am out of the two main kind of barrier creams that folks tend to talk about now that is vaseline which is essentially just petroleum jelly so i'll pop one up here um, and aquaphor which is here now with respect to aquaphor i always tell folks if you have a known lanolin allergy do not use this product it contains lanolin and that can cause a allergic reaction on the vulvar area which is really uncomfortable and we really want to avoid um, so i always flag that that said i do have a couple that i can show you here so one of them that i use uh, rescue balm um, I actually consider this to be more of a barrier cream because of how thick it is. Um, but some, sometimes these distinctions are just like, you know, my personal opinion, right? This isn't like, there's no science categorizing these things for lichen sclerosis perfectly. So it's quite thick. Hopefully we can see when I put some out. So you can see that when I hold that here, it's not running right it's staying put because it's very very thick now if i put vaseline or aquaphor it would do the exact same thing it would stay put it wouldn't run down so then when i'm applying it to my arm it's a very nice thick but very soft like it's thick but it's very very soft very luxurious feeling right and so again as we can see here it's not running so again, it's thicker, it has more staying power, and it's creating more of a barrier. Like if we put it a bit over my tattoo, you can kind of see it cover the tattoo a little bit. Um, so unlike the coconut oil, which would slowly kind of run a little bit more because it was thinner in consistency, this really stays put. I also have another product. It's actually by the Eucerin, who makes Aquaphor, but this isn't their... Um, traditional healing ointment this is actually a diaper rash cream that I sometimes use when I get fissures in the perianal area so this you'll see is similar to rescue bomb 
very similar. They both have zinc oxide, which is why it's got that white consist uh, color. And again, let's put it some, kind of right next to it, I guess, here. Again, very thick, but very luxurious, and it stays put, right? And so again, if I were to put Aquaphor and Vaseline, they would also be thick and very much staying where I put them. So this can be nice for folks who do not um, want things to kind of leak or run down their thighs. Um, that can be a really good option for you if you're somebody that does experience that. Um, and again, that thickness really does help create more of a barrier. Now, what's nice about uh, Sweet Spot Labs Rescue Bomb, it doesn't just have zinc oxide, but it also has oatmeal and other active ingredients in it that are meant to help with itchy skin, itchy, irritated skin, and really soothe and calm the itch. So again, you know, that's why when I have fissures or tears, if I'm really um, feeling more irritated, this one is my go-to absolutely hands down is my go-to um it's also really nice to travel with because unlike the oils it doesn't really leak so if i put this in my bag i don't have to worry about like oil getting everywhere which i have had that happen with coconut oil thing that burst open in my bag that was not fun so those are your barrier creams all right, there are also balms and salves. So remember that spectrum I was talking about with emollients kind of being the thinnest and then barrier creams being thicker? Well, balms and salves are kind of sitting somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. They're not as thin as emollients, but they're not necessarily as thick and occlusive as your traditional kind of barrier creams. That said, they can be a wonderful option for many folks like you know, emollients and barrier creams, they provide moisture to the area, they hydrate, they soothe, they protect. Um, in some cases, depending on the thickness of the salve or balm, um, they could act as a barrier cream too, a nice protective layer over any cuts or fissures, but they're a little bit more thin. So one thing I personally dislike about like thicker barrier creams like Vaseline, Aquaphor, etc., is because they're thick, I find it kind of awkward to walk with but that's just a personal preference, right? Some people love walking with it, no problem. I like something thinner. I'm also a really active person. I walk really fast, I'm at the gym a lot, so I like something with more glide um, when I'm active. When I'm at home, I don't mind a thicker barrier cream or like a thicker balm, but when I'm kind of moving, I want a bit more glide. So um, just to kind of share a couple examples of, um, different salves. Now I've actually had a couple of folks who made me my own salve from like their farm. <clears throat> so they had ingredients that they used and they made me kind of like a customized salve. I think one had like calendula and chamomile and a bunch of other things. So uh, there's, there's many types on the market. Um, the ones you may be more familiar with are things like V magic. So I don't really use uh, V magic, although somebody did send me one so I can show the consistency of V-Magic. This one is really, really popular. V-Magic is a balm. So you can see here, it's like a yellowy green. What would you say? Let me know in the comments. What, what color is this? Yellow, green, yellowy green. Okay, um, so I'll take some out. Now again, on my finger, you can see like a, it's not like a oil where it's dripping down my finger. So again, I'll put some here. It's got a really, it's it's got a really nice texture. Okay, this is really really nice and luxur luxurious. My gosh, couldn't say that word. Um, not moving as much as the coconut oil. Uh, that said, like it does have more glide than some of the thicker barrier cre creams. It does feel a bit thinner, a bit softer. So that can be a nice option for folks. Uh, typically the reason I don't use it is uh, simply because I'm vegan and the product isn't vegan. Speaking of vegan though, <laughs> this is currently oh, my favorite balm. So this is by FemSense. It was actually created by a pelvic floor physical therapist here in Toronto who has a special interest in lichen sclerosis and genitory syndrome of menopause and conditions that kind of cause drying um, or you know where drying makes the condition worse. And so they created this wonderful balm. I just love the ingredients. So 
we've got shea butter, we've got olive oil, we've got hemp seed oil, castor oil, vitamin E, very simple ingredients. The list isn't too, too long. Um, it's vegan, it's cruelty free, uh, it's not fragranced. It's really, really, really beautiful texture. Like, ugh, it's just okay. So I'm gonna take some out and again, put it on my finger. We can see it's not dripping down, right? So because it's a balm and it is uh, a bit thicker, they recommend kind of warming it up in between your fingers a little bit just to get it more um, movable. Movable? Would you say that? I don't know. Okay, so we'll kind of put it below the V Magic. This one's kind of harder to see. It just looks like my arm is shiny, <laughs> which is fine. Um, so it's very shiny. Um, but it's transparent. The V Magic, it's hard to tell with the camera, but you can see a bit of like the um, yellowy greeny color, whereas the Fem Sense is just completely translucent. Um, it's just such this buttery, rich, luxurious texture that again is really in between an emollient and a barrier cream because it's it's got that glide that I like from my emollients and it's not as thick and occlusive and clunky as I find like the pure Vaseline can be. So that's why I just, it's just a dream to use. I absolutely am in love with the ingredients. So this has very quickly become one of my go-to products. If you do want to check it out, um, I will leave a PDF um, in the description box below for you to kind of learn more about the product. And then um, I will have my discount code in the uh, description box below, of course, as well, if you want to use my discount code to get a little discount on this product. Um, another one I wanted to mention is Momotaro Self. Um, I don't personally have a discount code for that, but Selena Gomes, who is a sex educator with lichen sclerosis, um, Selena does have a discount code, so I will leave her discount code in the description box below if you want to check out that salve. I haven't personally tried it, but again, salves have a really nice luxurious texture and they're usually kind of in between um, emollients and barrier creams. All right, so I'm aware that I am a chatty person, so I'm going to try and make this more concise. I'm going to pop up a spreadsheet on this video. Okay, feel free to take a screenshot if you want. This is just a really simple, easy, concise way of kind of knowing what does what. All right, so emollient, it moisturizes, it soothes, stays in place. I put sometimes, it can have a tendency to run sometimes, especially in the warmer weathers. Um, Protective barrier, not as much as a salve or a barrier cream that's thicker. The, the protective barrier that it does have is going to be much thinner compared to balm salves and barrier creams. All right, let's move into the balm. It moisturizes, yes. It soothes, yes. Stays in place sometimes. Again, it has more glide than a barrier cream. So it kind of has the, a bit of a glide that an emollient would have, but it stays in place a little bit better than a traditional, just pure oil, one ingredient emollient. Um, balms and protective barriers. Um, sometimes, again, it's not always as um, sharp, as strong as a barrier cream, but because it's thicker than the emollient, it does have a bit of a protective bar barrier, so that can be quite nice for folks. Um, and then finally, uh, barrier creams yeses all the way through so barrier creams moisturize they soothe they stay in place and they do create the most optimal protective barrier for your vulvar skin now in terms of um transfer we talked about like running but i also want to briefly talk about uh color so just so you know, full disclosure, these products that are white with zinc oxide, some of that whiteness might go on your underwear. If you're going commando, that can get on your, um, your pants or your dress. I've never really had an issue with that beyond my underwear um, and it washes out quite easily, but I just full disclosure, there can be some white kind of staining that you might need to wash out of your clothing. Um, v Magic, because it is 
this color um if you're wearing white underwear that some of that color can go on the underwear a little bit um but most of these are transparent like the femme sense balm is completely transparent so again you know not not really gonna stain much in that sense i've never personally i've never had any issues i should say that because sometimes i don't have an issue but somebody else does so just full disclosure i haven't personally had an issue with that so I just wanted to also say a little piece about the color of your balm and how that can show up potentially on your underwear. Okay, how often should you be applying these products? Honestly, for this one, I say use it as much as you need. Um, and the more you use it, the more you're gonna get kind of in tune with your body and your body's needs. So what do I mean by that? When I talk about emollients or balms, which is what I'm gonna use most of the time, um, I use that anywhere from two times to like six, seven times a day. So on a day where I'm just going to be sitting at my computer, I'm more likely to just use it twice a day because there's not going to be a lot of friction and it's just kind of staying put. But for days that I'm going to be really active, like if, I've go if I'm going to the gym and then I'm running some errands, I know I'm going to be moving a lot, there's a lot of friction, then I'm going to apply it more. Um, with fissures or tears, anything like that, because I was really prone to a lot of tears and fissures. Then when I have tears and fissures, I'm moving away from my emollient and going more towards bombs, salves, but probably again, more of the barrier cream proper. And then I'm going to apply it um, in the morning and then I'm going to apply it before uh, or before and or after I urinate because that's usually what irritates me most is the urine getting into those open wounds. So before and after I urinate is when I'm going to use them. Of course, the other time I would use a barrier cream would be if I'm going to go swimming. So that's when I would use those. So a little bit more frequently because of like the bathroom situation, right? Just to keep that protective layer there and keep everything, you know, happy and healthy. Um, so that it's got like this optimal stage for healing to occur. And um, I basically intertwine coconut oil in my FemSense um, balm now is my daily. So again, two to five times a day, two to, two to five, two to six, you know, I play that kind of by ear. And then with fissures, I just make sure that I'm really protecting before and after I go to the bathroom and then definitely before I go to bed and then definitely if I'm going to be really active or walking, I'm going to really load up on that. Just want to touch really quickly on these products and steroids. So a lot of people wonder, can I use this right after I use my steroid or do I have to wait? What's the rule? So there is no concrete rule, right? I've never seen in any medical journal any kind of studies looking at like absorbency in all of this with respect to steroids and emollients or barrier creams. But what I will say is that I've spoken to quite a few dermatologists and gynecologists on this question, and they all tend to tell me the same thing, which is, you know, in general, a rule with steroids and other topicals is just wait 30 minutes in between application. So if you put your steroid on, just wait 30 minutes before applying another topical like a barrier cream, or if you have um, hormonal topicals, if you have a pain topical, if you're using lidocaine, anything like that, just try and give the steroid about 30 minutes to kind of let that medication sink in and absorb. That said, um, another thing that folks find sometimes is that actually cutting their steroid with a little bit of barrier cream or emollient really helps them. So for folks that are a little bit more that experience a little bit of discomfort when it, applying their steroid, they find that it becomes more comfortable if they cut it with a little bit of like Vaseline or coconut oil. Um, Dr. Kraft gave a talk a while back saying that's perfectly okay to do if that makes you feel comfortable and if that's what's gonna make you use your medication, then she's okay with that. Um, most steroids do come with our kind of own built-in moisturizer though. So my clebatasol uh, is in petroleum jelly, which is Vaseline. Um, which is a barrier cream. So for me, I apply my steroid right before I go to bed. I don't really apply a moisturizer after because I see the clebatazole as kind of having that built-in moisturizer for the night, and so I'll just start moisturizing the next day. But honestly, that, that one's up to you. 
Okay, last big point that I wanna to touch on is the importance of patch testing any new topical product that you're gonna put on your vulva. Regardless of if it is a balm, a salve, an emollient, et cetera, a pain topical, anything like that, always patch test your product first. I'm gonna use Sweet Spot Labs here to demo what I mean by a patch test. So patch test involves taking a really small amount of product. So I'm just taking a teeny little bit on my finger instead of, you know, I maybe would have squeezed out a lot more if I was gonna apply that everywhere to my vulva. So I've got this teeny amount of product on my hand to patch test. Let's pretend that this whole palm here represents my whole vulva. So normally when I would apply an emollient, a balm, anything like that, I would go in and cover that whole area, right? I would make sure everything is nice and hydrated and protected. But that's when I know that a product is good, safe, and healthy for my body. Let's pretend this product is new. I could have an allergy to an ingredient in this product, which means that if I put it on my vulva, I could have an allergic reaction where my vulva is gonna turn red, 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 and it's gonna swell up, you know, those kind of obvious signs of an allergic reaction. So to help myself know if I'm gonna have a reaction, or if I have any sensitivities or allergies, instead of putting it all over the vulva, I take just a small amount and I choose one part of the vulva. So I'm gonna just put it here. That's it. Okay, that's my little patch test. See how little space that takes up compared to the rest of my palm? That's how much I'm gonna put on. And then essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it on unless I have an immediate reaction. If I have an immediate reaction, I'm gonna go shower it off for sure. But assuming I don't, I'm just gonna leave it on for the first day. And then the next day I'm not gonna put anything on. I'm just gonna make wait and see, just to make sure that I don't have any new redness, any new pain, any new irritation, any new swelling. Now I emphasize the new here because sometimes folks who are symptomatic will already have some hyperpigmentation or some swelling or some irritation. So we're talking about new. If that patch was already irritated, I would want it to get significantly more irritated or for it to change color or something like that. It's always a new symptom. If it was already there, it probably means you're okay. Um, you're looking for a new reaction. So I usually do that and then assuming that's fine, I will go the second day, I'll apply a little bit more product and I might bring it all the way down this side. I do this just to be super cautious. By the way, you don't need to be as cautious as me. So I'll wear that for a day and then the next day I won't wear. And then if by that time I don't have any reactions to the product, I basically say, okay, this is safe for my body. I'm not allergic to anything. I don't have any sensitivities to it. It's not causing me any harm. And then I go ahead and use the full product and will massage it all over the vulva and keep that protected. So that's kind of patch testing. I do have a more in-depth blog post on that if you want to learn more about that, but very, very important just to make sure that you're always patch testing your products before putting anything new on your vulva. All right, so in today's video, we went over the differences between emollients, balms and salves, and barrier creams. I shared a quick spreadsheet showing the main differences. I've highlighted a lot of different products, given a few demos on consistency. I've shared my day-to-day -day routine and when I use what for what, and I've discussed the importance of patch testing any new Volvar product. Um, on your vulva, of course. Uh, so that is it for this video. I will catch you in the next one.